Let's begin with Smart Notebook Basics. To open the Smart Notebook program, locate it on your desktop and double click. This will open the Smart Notebook program and allow you to create your own lesson. But for now, let's just learn some of the basic tools. To put some text on your paper, all you have to do is start typing. If you do not like the location of your text, you can click on it and move it to the desired position. You can also, once it has this box around it, change it, lengthen it, make it bigger, smaller. The green circle will turn your text. If you would like to change the color of your text, you can highlight, go to your color toolbox, and choose a new color. To further edit your text, you can click on the little A, and you can see that you can add bullets or numbers or some more text options. I clicked off of it so my text toolbar went away. If you want that text toolbar back, you click on this A and your text toolbar will be back. So you could also change your font, the size of your font, and some basic functions that you may remember from Microsoft Word. If you do something in Smart Notebook that you didn't want to do, if you make a mistake, it's sort of like Word. You still have the undo button, so you can click undo, and it'll go back to the previous things that you've done. Or you can highlight your text, backspace, and start over. Or you can take the cursor and backspace just a little bit, depending on what you did wrong. You also have some tools on your selection bar that we'll talk about later. You can also write on your smart board with the pens that are located in the tray at the bottom of your smart board. You can change the font color on the smart notebook up to four colors, the four colors that it shows you on the tray. You can write with that pen just as it writes or you can find this little tool that says pens. Click on pens and then again you can change colors, you can change your line style, you can change the transparency, you can change the pen itself. There's the normal pen, a calligraphy pen, a crayon, a highlighter, the creative pen, the magic pen which my students love, and the shape recognition pen. So with the normal pen, it's just your writing. So let's try it out. I'll do a sight word because that's what we're working on. I do not have the calligraphy pen available on my version, but at school we do have the calligraphy pen. So, and it just writes just like calligraphy. The crayon you can see, let's change the color and then you still see the little pen tool but now it will write in crayon. The highlighter will highlight something that you've done on the board. The creative pen gives you different options, rainbows, flowers, it's a little more difficult to write with because it writes so big. The magic pen, you will see, writes, and then in just a minute it will disappear. And that's why my students like it because they love to watch it disappear. Also, with the magic pen, if you circle something, it will zone in just on what you circled. So that's kind of neat if you want to show them. Let's say you're labeling a flower and you want to show them the seed. You could 
zone in on the seed. We have looked at the undo button and the edit in text, but if there's something on your page, um, right now I'm on pen, so make sure you go back to the select tool when you want to do something different on your page. Um, and let's say I don't want something that I've done on there, so you can hit the eraser also. And you probably see the eraser on your tools, on your tool tray in front of your smart board. But from here you can also erase different sizes. You can erase anything on your board that you didn't want. Another neat text option that you can do is, especially if your students are writing on the board, let's say they're writing their name, and then you click on their name, and you want the program to recognize the word that was written. So you can, right, you can click on the arrow on the right side, and you see over here it says, Recognize Sam. So if you click that, it will change it into typing instead of handwriting. So just kind of a neat feature if your students are learning to write something and then to see if the smart notebook can recognize the word that they wrote. Besides text, you can insert shapes into your document. So you can see the various shapes over here. Let's do a heart. Then you just click and drag until it's the size that you want. You can insert a line. Insert shows you the various kinds of lines that you can insert. And again, you just click on your page and drag. Remember to always go back and hit your select tool when you're changing, when you want to change the tool that you're using on the smart, smart notebook page. If you've done that and then all of a sudden you remember there's something different you want on your line or any object on your page, you can click on it and you can see that you can make it longer, shorter. It also has the little triangle so that you can clone it, which means you're going to make another one exactly like that one. You can delete it. You can cut it off the page. You can copy it paste it. Infinite cloner means that you can just click on it, the one that's the infinite cloner, and keep dragging more of them onto your page. I use this one a lot for, um, for the calendar that I create at school because the students check the weather every day and so they'll move the cloud and they can just keep moving a cloud, moving a cloud. You don't have to recreate a cloud, a cloud every day. Okay, so to start a new page, that's all one page. Let's say you want another page in your document. You simply come down to the right side or find this blue arrow and click the arrow. Now I have this page created for something I'm going to show you in a minute. So I'll click the arrow again until I'm on a nice, clean page. And then let's talk about inserting the picture. You saw the picture on the previous page. So to insert a picture, you can come to this picture frame. And this is your picture gallery. Um, one way to search for the pictures is simply in the search bar. Let's type in horse. And you can hit enter or you can hit the little search button and it will show you pictures of horses and you can scroll down find the horse that you like and simply click on it and drag it onto your page another way to insert a picture is to come to the insert picture and then you can find a picture on your computer. So here's one of my students at the smart board. So I'll just click on that twice. And then this picture is in my smart notebook program. You can see it's really large. So you can come down here to the bottom right and click and then drag until your picture is the size that you would like.
Another way to insert a picture or a clip art into Smart Notebook is to open up Word. And I'm just going to do a smiley. We'll make the smiley pretty big so you can see it. And you click on your smiley. And then you can just drag it into your Smart Notebook file. And let go. And there's your smiley. So the same works for any clip art that you do in Microsoft Word or pictures that you have in Word. You can just click on them and drag them over into Smart Notebook, which is really nice because it's sometimes easier to find pictures in Word to me than in Smart Notebook. Okay, now that we've um, talked about inserting some objects and a little bit about pages, let's talk about some more about the pages. And in inserting a blank page, I kind of showed you that already. You can just hit the blue arrow and that inserts a blank page for you. If you want to clone a page, here is your page tool button. You simply click on pages and you can see all the pages that you have created in this file. To clone it, it's kind of like the drop down triangle when you select an object. Now we have selected the whole page and we still go to the triangle button and again from here you can insert a blank page. You can clone the blank page which means it will make another one just like this one. You can rename the page. You can delete the page. You can reset the page which means it will go back to the last version that you saved. You can also clear your page, clear ink from the page, add a screen shade, let's click on that one, and it just covers up your whole page so that your audience can't see it. From the same drop down menu, you can set the background, so if you don't like white, you can change that. Maybe you want your page background to be blue, so you can have a solid feel or even a gradient feel, a pattern feel, um, and you can browse an image to fit it. So there's all kinds of there's all kinds of ways to create a document that suits you. This auto hide button down here, um, this menu that pops out when you're changing stuff will stay out until you click on the page and it disappears because you have that auto hide button clicked. If you don't want the if you do not want this part to disappear when you're on your page then you simply unclick auto hide and now you can see this and the page you're working on. Another way you can change your background is to right click on your page and again, you can see some of those same tools that we got from the triangle drop down arrow on our pages. Um, and so you could add the screen shade the same way. But to change the background, you can right click, set background fill, and then change your background by right clicking as well. So there's also some different ways to get to the same tools. You can go to the tool menu on the right, you can do some right clicking, you can click on the object, so you just kind of have to play around in Smart Notebook and learn some of the different ways and see which one works best for you. If you have put an object on, the pa on a page and you would like it on another page, you can go to your pages and let's say you like this horse and you want to put him on another page. You can simply hover over your pages, choose the page that you new page that you want him on and click. And now if you go to page one, you will see that your horse is on page one also. He's just down a little. I need to move him up. There he is. So he's on page one now. This concludes my first tutorial. I hope you will watch tutorial number two.